In this lesson, we want to review ratios, rates, and proportions. So for any of you that took a pre-algebra or an elementary algebra course, you covered ratios, rates, and proportions pretty thoroughly. But again, it's just something we want to review so you don't get caught up on something very trivial later on in the course. So let's begin our lesson today by thinking about ratios. So what is a ratio in math? It's basically just a comparison of two quantities. So how much of one thing there is compared to how much of another thing there is. So if we had something like pineapples and oranges, we could compare the number of pineapples we have to the number of oranges that we have. Okay, we can use a ratio to do that. So if I said, what is the ratio of pineapples to oranges? What would be your answer? So what is the ratio of pineapples to oranges? Okay, and when we work with ratios, you're gonna see this keyword two a lot. So essentially what I wanna do, I wanna count the number of pineapples that I have. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six pineapples. And then I wanna count the number of oranges I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have two rows of six, so that would be 12. So I have 12 oranges. Okay, so six pineapples and 12 oranges. So if I want the ratio of pineapples to oranges, all I need to do, since I said pineapples first, I'm just gonna basically put the number six, which is the number of pineapples I have, and then the word two, okay, that's a key word when you're working with ratios. And then since I have oranges last, I'm just gonna put the number of oranges, which is 12. So the ratio of pineapples to oranges is six to 12, okay? Now, I can simplify that. It means something to say I have six to 12, but it means even more if I simplify that and say, okay, well, between six and 12, the greatest common factor there, or the greatest common divisor, you could say, would be six. So if I divide six by six, I would get one. If I divide 12 by six, I would get two. So now I have something that has some meaning. If I said the ratio of pineapples to oranges was one to two, then really you could start to think in your head, if you didn't have a picture, that I have one pineapple for every two oranges. Okay, so it becomes kind of clearer what the relationship is between pineapples and oranges. Now, if I reverse the wording here, and I said I wanted the ratio of oranges to pineapples, what I would do is I would just reverse the numbers. So instead of one to two, I would put two, the number of oranges, two, the key word, and then one, the amount of pineapples I have per two oranges. Okay, so now I'm saying that I have two oranges for every one pineapple. Now, we don't have to write a ratio like this. There's other ways. So instead of using the keyword two, we can also write a colon between the numbers. Okay, and then also, which is most common, we can use a fraction. So we can say two to one like this, okay? Now you might be tempted to kind of write this as just the number two, right? If we see a fraction two over one, or if we see a fraction four over one, or five over one, or a million over one, we're tempted to kind of get rid of the denominator and just write the numerator part. Most of us would just say, okay, this is two. But with a ratio, it represents a relationship. It's the amount of oranges to the amount of pineapples. So I need that one there to express the second part of the relationship. So I would leave this as two to one in fractional form like that. All right, let's take a look at a very simple example. So on a local church trip, there are 18 boys and 27 girls. What is the ratio of boys to girls? And then what is the ratio of girls to boys? So the first thing is, what is the ratio of boys to girls? So boys to girls, okay? Well, it's very easy. I just list the number of boys first, which in this case, there's 18 boys. So just put 18. Again, the wording matters because boys came first, the number of boys came first. Then you could put two, you could put a colon, you could write as a fraction, whatever you wanna do. And then you put the number of girls because that comes second. So in this case, that's 27. And you can reduce this. A lot of people like to write this as a fraction because they're used to reducing fractions and it makes it mentally easier for them. If you wanna do it that way, that's fine. If you wanna put the word two, it's fine. If you wanna put a colon, it's fine. It's all the same. 
So 18 over 27, the greatest common factor of 18 and 27 would be 9. If I divide 18 by 9, I get 2. If I divide 27 by 9, I get 3. So essentially, the ratio of boys to girls is 2 to 3. Okay, so that's telling me that I have two boys for every three girls. Now, if it asks for what is the ratio of girls to boys, well then girls to boys, I would just flip this around, right? If I have two boys for every three girls, then I have three girls for every two boys, right? It's the ratio of three to two. All right, let's look at a little application problem. So a local bar is having a promotion party for 98 customers. Okay, so remember this number, 98 customers. Each customer will receive a free vodka bottle. Okay, so they're giving out presents. There are two different bottle types. One is pink and one is black. Now, the pink vodka bottles will be given to the female customers and the black vodka bottles will be given to the male customers. If the ratio of males to females is five to two, how many of each bottle type should be prepared? So in other words, the bar owners want to know how many black vodka bottles they need to get ready and how many pink vodka bottles need to be ready, given that, again, the ratio of males to females is five to two, and they're going to have 98 customers, okay? So how do you solve something like this? We don't need a variable. We don't need to get into algebra. How do we solve this with just some plain math? Well, the first thing is to realize that if I have the ratio of males to females, now let me just write this here. We have males to females, and that's five to two, right? So what does that tell me? That tells me in a group of seven people that I've got five males and two females. So in a group of seven, You've got five males and you've got two females. Okay, so that means if I had 98 total customers, how many groups of seven could I make? Well, 98 divided by seven is 14. So I'd have 14 groups where each group had five males and two females. Okay, well, it's pretty simple from here. If I wanna know how many males are gonna go, I just multiply 14, the number of groups of seven that I can make by five the number of males in each group. So 14 times five is gonna give me 70, right? So there would be 70 males. Let me make that better. And then if I wanted to know how many females, again, I would multiply 14 times two. So 14 times two is 28. So there would be 28 females. Does that make mathematical sense? Yes, it does. 70 plus 28 is 98. That's the total number of customers in the bar, right, for that party. And then if you look at 70 to 28, if I erase all this, it should still be a ratio of five to two, right? If I said I had 70 males in a bar and 28 females in a bar, I should get the ratio of five to two. If you divide 70 by 14, you get five. If you divide 28 by 14, you get two. So you get five to two there. So to answer our question here, to answer our question here, Again, it says how many of each bottle type should be prepared. We would say that he's going to need 70 black bottles, black bottles, and then he's going to need 28 pink bottles. Okay, pretty simple overall. All right, let's talk a little bit about rates. So a rate is a special type of ratio where the units are different. Generally speaking, when we work with rates, we're gonna be talking about unit rates. So how much of some quantity relates to one unit of another quantity? A very easy example to understand is miles per gallon, right? If you're driving in your car, so how many miles do you get to go per one gallon of gas? And the way you find this is, you basically fill your tank up and you drive around, right? You you might go a certain amount of miles and then you divide it by the number of gallons that were in your tank when it gets to completely empty. And you can say, I went this many miles per each gallon of gasoline, right? So for this blue car, it goes 700 miles per 10 gallons. And for this red car, it goes 600 miles per six gallons. So to kind of compare them right now, it's a little bit up in the air. You might be able to do the math in your head and say, well, I know this car has a better miles per gallon. 
but it's a little bit easier if we just divide the numerator by denominator. So 700 divided by 10, we know that we would just basically cancel this with one of the zeros. So we could say that this is 70, you could say miles over one gallon. Mostly we write this as 70 MPG, right, miles per gallon. But this is the official way to write it. And then this guy, I know that 600 divided by six would be 100. So this one would be 100 miles per one gallon, okay? So which car gets the better gas mileage? Of course, this one does, right? It goes 100 miles per every one gallon, whereas this one only goes 70 miles per one gallon. All right, let's take a look at a quick problem. So Jeremy works at a local bank and earns $760 for a 40-hour work week. His sister, Beth, works at a local school and only earns $735 for a 35-hour work week. Who makes more on a per-hour basis? So very easy problem to solve. I would just take Jeremy's information. So he makes $760 for a 40-hour work week. And you can put $760 over 40 hours like this. And then we would compare this to, for Beth, she makes $735 for a 35-hour work week. So for 35 hours. Just divide the number in the numerator over the number in the denominator. Don't really worry about the units because what's going to happen is you're going to keep the units in the numerator. The unit in the denominator is going to be a single unit, right? So 760 divided by 40 is going to give us 19. So really, I could say this is $19 per one hour, right? Or we could say $19 per hour. For this guy, 735 divided by 35 is 21. So this would be $21 over one hour. Or again, you could say $21 per hour. So obviously, Beth makes more money per hour, right? She doesn't make more money in total because she didn't work enough hours. But on a per hour basis, she actually makes more, right? She makes $21 per hour. So to kind of answer this question, where it says who makes more on a per hour basis, we can say Beth, right? Beth makes more on a per hour basis, right? She makes $21 an hour versus her brother, Jeremy, who's only making $19 per hour. Okay, let's wrap up the lesson by talking about proportions. So a proportion basically states that two ratios or two rates are equal. We'll know if we have a proportion by checking to see if the cross products are equal, right? So we have here that we can check to see if two ratios or rates are equal by using the equality test for fractions, okay? If you don't remember that, it basically tells you that two fractions are equal if the cross products are equal. So as an example, if we have two over nine and we say, is this equal to 10 over 45? We can check to see if we have a proportion here by just cross multiplying, right? Take the denominator of one, multiply by the numerator of the other. So nine times 10 is 90. And then the denominator of this one times the numerator of this one, 45 times two is also 90. So the cross products are equal. So we can say, yes, this is a proportion, right? These two are equal. All right, let's check this one. So again, we wanna do the cross products. So what is five times 28? That's gonna be 140. What's nine times 14? That's gonna be 126. So those two are not equal, so no, this is not a proportion. All right, so again, for this guy, we're just gonna cross multiply. So 92 times 57 is 5,244. And then 276 times 19 is again, 5,244. So the cross products here are equal, so yes, this is a proportion. All right, so this is typically what you would see in a ratio and proportion section. A problem like this where we have seven males to 28 females. We're saying, is this equal or do we have a proportion here for 28 males to 88 females? As long as the units match up, so in other words, in the numerator you have males, in the numerator you have males, in the denominator you have females, in the denominator you have females, once you've checked that, you're just gonna multiply the numbers, right? You're gonna cross multiply. So you have 28 times 28, which is 784. So if I multiply across here, this is 784. And then what's 88 times seven? That's 616. So because the cross products there are not equal, we don't have a proportion. So this guy is a no, right? These two are not equal. All right, what about this one? We have nine cups of flour to 19 cups of sugar. We're saying, is this equal to, we have 190 cups of flour to 81 cups of sugar. So again, just check your units. You have cups of flour and cups of flour in the numerator. You have cups of sugar and cups of sugar in the denominator. So you can just really cross multiply. 
So you have 19 times 190. That would be 3,610. Let me make that a little clearer. And then you would have 81 times 9, which is 729. So those two amounts are not equal. So we can say, no, this is not a proportion.